Ooh. uncle over there, right? He's just like this constant like... sound of the tok 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 tok. Okay, welcome to another episode of Food Finders. Today we are doing Jurong Part 2. It is still based on this list that we have. 16 best food secrets in Jurong that's worth the travel time. The last round we did Jurong East. This time we're gonna do Jurong West. For the fans, today we have a special co-host. It's Ben King! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for the disappointment, guys. Seth needed a co-host. I answered the call. I like food. We're gonna go check out some food here. What do you do, Gary? I used to do Tell filming. Yourself. Now I just eat. So Gary will join us for Jurong West and let's head to our first stop now in the heartlands. Let's go. Okay, so the first stop is actually not on our list, even though I said that we would follow our list, but you know... Oh, here we go again! So we're gonna try this chicken rice stall that is apparently the hidden gem in Jurong West. I'm excited. Uncle, what's your more popular, famous... What's your most Okay, so we ordered the roast chicken mixed with the white chicken. It looks great. It's like glistening, you know. Glistening. Like, the uh, first thing I notice is usually with the roasted chicken, even though it's breast, it does seem very succulent. Did they, did they give us breast? I don't think this is breast. This, this looks like like Thai. You eat a lot of chicken rice? Yeah, I love chicken rice. Singapore's number one food, right? Fun fact, Gary is Malaysian. Correction, I'm Canadian. My family is from Malaysia. Oh. That's why my accent's like this. Do you like Malaysian chicken rice more? or Singapore chicken rice? Interesting question. I would say before, I would say Malaysia stuff is always better. Yes! But after being here for like eight years, Singapore chicken rice, I think is above the Malaysian chicken rice. But that's not for every other food. Yeah, I would say not, chicken- Not everything, yeah, no. but, but chicken rice. <laughs> I'm gonna try like the rice by itself. I like the rice. Texture-wise, not too wet, not too dry on me. You know when the, the rice is like individual pieces, it's not like too pong. Yeah, I don't, like, can, I don't you, like that. You can taste the, the individual grains yeah. mm. of the flavors. Very moist. I personally like chicken rice with all the flavors. That was amazing. Oh shit, the roast chicken is actually not bad. I, I actually like the roast over the white. I, most of the times I like to order white chicken. But here I actually prefer the roast over the white. I think both are good. Usually the, the roast ones are, would be drier, which I don't find that to be an issue here. It's nice, it's good. They cooked it in such a way like the fats just turns to jelly. Gelatinous layer between the, the skin. Out of five, what would you give this? 3.5? 3.5. Like to me, 3 will be average, right? 3 is average, 3.5 is like just slightly above average. I'll give it a 4, I'll give it a 4. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I agree on the floor. Yeah? I agree on the floor. I agree on the floor as well. This is it for this hidden chicken rice find. We are gonna head to the next spot now. Trend, transition here. Okay, so we are gonna drive to Taman Jurong Food Center. Basically, as a foreigner, I feel like if you own a car or if you have a car, in my mind, like, you must be rich. So Seth left me uh, to go order some of this Hen Lai duck stall. So we're gonna order the trifecta, the duck, the roast pork, the cha siu. Hello, I my chi gui. Ni chi gui lo. Ha 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 ha. Don't the man, don't the pie of the We're gonna go order Feng Zhen Lor Mi. It's another one of the popular items here. Oh, hey, they want Michelin here. Michelin Guide. We're back with all the food. I got the trifecta, the duck, the roasted pork, and the barbecue pork. Mm. Okay, so here we got the lor mee. This is feng zhen lor mee. The thought of slurping down this piping hot bowl of lor mee makes my mouth water. Thick and smooth, the gravy coats the noodles well and has a pleasant garlicky taste. The vinegar gives it a nice sourness as well. I'm gonna try the lor mee first. Uh, some places actually do a fried fish version. We got some like fried pork balls. I love this. What is that? Very gelatinous. 
how raw meat should be. Yeah, it's like thick enough. It's not like some places they do it too watery. It does start gelatinousy, but then later, closer to the end, it will get more watery. Really? It does. Yeah. What's the science to that? I have no idea. <laughs> yes, science. How's it? How's it? Wait, wait, wait. No, don't tell me yet. I think it's good. I personally would like it with a bit more of the, the vinegar. I've always liked lor mee because they give you such a variety of uh, stuff. So you got like the roast pork belly, some fried fritter. So I, I rarely see the sliced fish in lor mee. I think it's fried Is fish. Is this called the fried fish? You want to split it? There's only one. I tried the big one. The co-host becomes the guinea pig. Yeah, you sign up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fish. <laughs> the minced pork ball or minced pork thing is actually, in my opinion, really good. It's not overly dry. There is still some juiciness in it, but it's cooked thoroughly. I give it a solid 3.5. 3.5? Yeah. Ah, your Lomi standards are, are high, man. It's good. It's good. Definitely right. good, but not a 4 for me. I feel this is a 4 though. I think they did the texture of the gravy really well. It's a good variety of ingredients for 450, not expensive. <laughs> it's not overly sweet. Yeah, it's not overly sweet. It's not like very extreme. It feels pretty balanced. Balanced. I only would have preferred like a fattier, like a bit more fats inside. Okay, moving on, we're gonna try the pork. Okay, 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 okay. The crust is still crispy, right? Like, yeah. It's not just like the fat that's soft, the meat below is soft as well. Okay, love the pork. I'm gonna move on to the uh, rosak. This is the breast. Did you ask for a breast? I actually like duck breasts more than I like duck thigh. Why? I think this is more flavorful. Chicken thigh is better, duck but breast. duck for whatever reason, I like the duck breast. Even though this breast is still tender, good recommendation, good find. A lot of people that work in this area will actually come and queue for a Tian Lai rice stall. I mean, since we've been here, that line has not stopped. Yeah, when they're really good hawkers, the yeah. auntie and uncle, they don't really care about you. They just, what do you want, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah. Uncle over there, right? He's just like, this constant like, sound of the tok 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 4.5. My favorite so far. We're good with this. Let's move on. Really? Chai pa is a bit sweeter. The ones I usually have is a bit saltier. There is supposed to be some sweetness, but I mean, how sweet is it? Really, it depends on the, depends on the recipe. Yeah, I think it's not bad. I like the kick from the chili. How do you find the kuih though? It's soft and velvety. I feel I like them a bit springier. I like, I like the chai pa though. Like, I do like that it's sweeter. I know some places they, they really mince it because it's like, like way too small. So I, I do like that this is in a biteable size. So you have that, that texture contrast with the kueh. So is it normal that chi kueh would use pork? Is it normal? I'm not sure actually. A lot of things use pork lard just to like enhance the flavor, right? Because it's yeah. like more fat. But I do believe this one has pork lard. I could be wrong. I, I, I give this a three. You give it a three. This is like average. It's to average. me, average. Average to jikui. Yeah, I, I give this a four. I do like this jikui. This is two dollars, by the way, so not, not expensive. We are done at Taman Jurong. We are going to move on to the next spot. Volcano transition. There is no such thing. What kind of pancake are we looking for? It's like a peanut pancake, if I'm not wrong from the photos. It's, it's not like an Angmo pancake, right? No, no, no. It's, it's not, like the... No, it's not. This, this was actually recommended in the comments. They say like, try the pancake. But they gave a very vague description. Try the pancake. What the hell? So, Seth, do your job and find it. Mission accomplished. We are gonna try and find this pancake stall. There's a friendly one in uh, Taman Jurong. Moments later. Ah long pancake. This is very similar to the Penang one. The Penang yeah. one, you only get the first one. The corn, peanut, corn and egg. What's it called in Penang? Ban kueh. Ban kueh. Yeah. What flavor should we try? I want to try the original. Uh, Okay, so we got the alon pancake, which has the peanut, corn, and egg. Here they cut it into four, but over there they only serve it to you like this. I think it's actually easier if you like fold it and like take a bite. Okay, I'll, I'll we'll fold it. Yeah, minjang kueh cheers. Um, this is actually surprising. It's not bad. Yeah, I actually was not expecting this. Like the egg is actually still a, bit, a little bit runny. It's not overcooked. I think the flavor bad. is there. The one critique is usually the crust, this this side. But it's not crispy. Is it? Yes. Inside is, is great. It's yeah. like nice and soft, soft but you want the outside to be like... I give it a 3.5. Yeah, 
Three point five. I'll give it three point five though. If they could just get the exterior four. Easily. Yes, easily four. I think it just yeah. needs some more preheat time. But if they had that pan just going, like it would be easily a four. So we are at Bunle Place Food Center. The longest wait was power, right? I hope it is as hyped up as your queue was. And then there's this store that we're trying. It's a economic rice slash Teochew porridge kind of thing. Okay, let's try the Hokkien Mee first. So this whole part, I like that you can... So they just leave like a jar of fried pork lard. You know, you can basically just add add how, uh, however much pork lard you want lah. Okay, small annoyance is when stalls cut the prawns in half. So it kind of looks like there's more but it's like, you know, half a prawn. LIAR! Okay, there's like small specks of like this um, carbon. So recently I learned from someone, you know, having this specks is like poor walk maintenance. Oh, is like, it? Like it shouldn't like come off. So a bit more cleaning yeah, needs to be done. Yeah, they probably need to clean the walk more. <laughs> yeah. The Hokkien Mee is good. Slightly above norm. I think right. the flavor is there. Because we have to wait for this one a little bit longer. It's slightly got a bit soggy. cold. Yeah, yeah and it got a bit soggy. soggier. Usually it's a bit like wetter, right? I think the flavor is good. I give it a 3.5. I agree with a 3.5. Above average, but like not not in like the realm of like, oh, yeah. really good Hokkien Mee. Okay, but we gotta, gotta try the uh, Tian Tian Xiang. Here we got the Huang Kua and then we have the Angoli, which is... What kind of fish is this? Angoli. <laughs> this whole thing was $9. It's Including this? Yeah, yeah. With That's the, okay. You know what, I'm, I'm gonna try the porridge first. I'm a big fan of Teochew porridge. It's a good mixture yeah. between some some of it is like very watery. Yeah, it is not too watery. It's not too right? watery. It's not too watery. But it's also not crazy creamy either. Generally the reason why you want a little bit of that sauce on top is because uh, the porridge is like it's basically rice and water, right? So not a whole lot of flavor. And then all the Teochew stuff that you choose will be a little bit saltier. So when you mix it together, then the flavors really come apart. And I think this is a good balance of salty and, yeah, and, 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 yeah. and blandness. Oh, the ginger, like, it goes really well together. Plain, but like, pretty powerful, strong taste from the side ingredients. I actually quite like this. And actually, like, on hindsight, like, $9, this is actually considered cheap. I think it's good, but I, I still think it's about average. Oh, I mean, the porridge itself, above average. I will rate just the porridge, like, 3.5. Right. But as the total, 3? I give it a 4. I stick with my 4. I believe it's a 4. The highlight, Bunle power nasi lemak. So with nasi lemak, I know that the rice, yeah, just the rice, just yeah. the rice. I'm getting the coconut. It's a clean coconut flavor. The texture is good. And we'll do the ikan bilis and peanuts oh, with okay. the sambal. All right. The flavor is there. It's like a standard great nasi lemak. Nothing too crazy. I think what I think is the best part about this one that is like a straight four dollar. That's a but I think there's also like just generally quite a bit of hype around this one. Maybe Bunle just doesn't have a whole lot oh, of nasi lemak. I really like the rice. Though. Fried chicken, I've had better. Yeah, I, I wish the chicken was crispier. I, I've had the nasi lemak where yeah. the, the coconut in the rice, yeah. it just like whack you in the face. 3.5. 3.5. I, I, I will give this a 4 and the price is, is pretty okay. I think for the price range, it's like yeah. it's definitely worth, it's worth it. worth it for the price. Down in Boonley Place, we're gonna move on to the last spot. So like when I first came to uh, Singapore, you know, I got pretty wasted one night. I was so blur, right? Like like so drunk. Uncle like just, he, I think he got a bit fed up with me. He was just like, oh yeah, yeah, you're home. So I you know, paid him and exited. I couldn't even make it to the house because I just looked up to the building. I'm like, this isn't, this, this isn't right. I, I I walked around trying to figure things out. And I was too drunk. I was way too tired. It was like 3, 4 a.m. in the morning yeah, already. I, I saw a patch of grass and I went, this is it tonight. <laughs> when you woke up, how far off were you? Like a block away. I didn't wake up on my own, you know. It was like some auntie going to the wet market in the morning, like uh, 6 a.m. Oh boy, yeah, hey. You did? <laughs> wake up, I'll go home ready. To a testament to Singapore, which is why I love this place so much, right? No, no one robbed you. No one robbed me. I had a full backpack, like computer, work gear, wallet. If this was Malaysia. Confirm. 
I'm pretty sure I would have been woken up midway being robbed Being or robbed? I don't want to speak ill about Malaysia, right? So I would say the same as Canada too. So we just park. Gary, do you think this is an actual cafe? I don't think it's the cafe. I think it's probably more of a kopitiam. I mean, I can't really tell from the back. It looks closed. We're about to turn the corner to find out. Oh, okay. It, it, oh, it's a, it's, it's a cafe. It's, it's a cafe. It's a real <laughs> it is cafe. An So yeah, we're gonna get some of their signature. But they have a lot of stuff. Generally, what's your opinion on places with a lot of stuff? It's not a favorable first impression. It just feels like they don't have a single like focus on what they're good at. This is the problem with having too much stuff on the menu. I can't figure out what to actually order or choose. You want like a pizza? Pizza. Big rice. Anything that you want, they have it. First course has come. This is the grilled salmon with tomato herb sauce. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What the I don't feel like the sauce does anything for me. I think if they knew how to make like a bechamel, like a white yeah, yeah, sauce. I, would, I feel that pairs with salmon. The salmon itself, I think it's well cooked. I prefer mine actually not fully cooked. The skin could use a bit more of a sear. It's got a little bit of the sound, but not that full crackling. I try the uh, onion rings. Pretty sure these are the frozen onion rings. Just pull out of the freezer, deep fry. Oil. Usually when I see the breadcrumbs on onion rings, it's like the frozen one. Okay, so seafood egg glue. Olu is here for 990 it is disturbingly cheap and we have a drink blue curacao pineapple flat white for gary with the little with bear. the bear the bear is amazing it's good Kill good bear. latte art the, the seafood looks kind of sad it's definitely like frozen it's frozen uh, seafood not too bad Maybe not too bad for for agro oil you can you can taste the garlic and the olive oil i like the pasta the ingredients though like yes uh, would you um, prefer them go fresh ingredients but pay 16. More. i would pay more for but I do like the, the pasta, pasta itself. itself. The pasta itself, I think they did it pretty well. Okay, so this is supposedly the 8-inch smoked duck pizza. Based on like the Subway sandwich that I usually get. If that was 6, this can't be 8. The, the crust is definitely, it's a pre-bought crust, right? So it's definitely not made fresh or anything like, like that. It, the yeah, the just... cucumbers is an odd one. Never really seen cucumbers on a pizza so, before. It's not right to do pizza like that. This is 100% like a, like a frozen dinner kind of thing. It's, it's more like pizza toppings on bread. This is not a pizza really for me. This is the Asian version of like westernized food. The price, the location to provide an options within the community for Agmal food. Oh, there's a plug <laughs> under the table. Hey, oh, there's two plugs here. You can come here, plug in your laptop, charge your phone. I mean, it's a cafe. I think it's very smart to get people to like hang out here, right? Yeah, that's points for that. I'll probably give it like a three point five, and I can tell like they mm. put an effort into making it. I would actually go with a two point five. You know, you can use cheap ingredients and stuff, but this one, this one just feels lazy. Okay. Okay, the coffee is actually not. The too coffee bad, is like, actually pretty good. Like only the coffee is not bad. Yeah. We're gonna pop back to the car now to summarize our Durong West journey. Okay, so we have come to the end of our Durong West journey. How are you feeling? Full. Very full. full. First time. Out of our entire journey, what is your favorite so far? For sure, it's gonna be that that duck rice. Like the, the portion size, the quality, I felt everything came together well. Uh, it's definitely one of those like hidden places that I would have mm. never known about had you not have brought me. You know what, let's just talk about the cafe first. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to bash it or anything, but it just felt like they were trying too hard to offer everything. Like it's a huge multi-page menu, a lot of frozen stuff. I think the general people won't miss all the options because like most yeah. people like a few things anyways so you can't get everything I, I feel like they could save a lot of costs like just focus on like I don't know, 10 <laughs> maybe they would have right. to change up their yeah. style yeah. from like frozen stuff to making sure yeah. they get cir yeah. circulation yeah. of fresh food yeah. Yeah. But I think that will overall improve fact, the quality yeah that would improve the quality okay so back to your okay. favorite yes, I do like the Tian Tian Xiang which was the economic rice stall oh really I actually found that really comforting like in terms of the food when ordering it feels like kind of nice you like talk to me okay even though they are popular right like this that's kind of like a constant constant queue i i do like that uh, popular hawkers are still friendly <laughs> that annoys me when they're like hey wait wait you want to want to want to go lah don't go don't go if you want to go i can go uh okay so we're just gonna read through some comments quite happy he went to a few places but didn't make
managed to share some of the good food. Hidden gem stays hidden. And I replied him, Hey, Shelly. <laughs> and then he ghosted me. So this comment was what we were referring to. How about Taman Jurong Hawker? So like, you know, there's this good pancake store, which I hope is the one we went to. I'm like, honestly not super sure. We did the law meat as well. And the roast meat, Cynthia Lin, you know, we took your comments. We tried it. Um, what else? Right, okay. I think that's all the interesting comments we had. If you like Gary in this video, uh, leave a comment. Thank you for the opportunity. Today was really fun. It's been like a long kind of thing that I've always wanted to do. Uh, and I definitely want to do this again. So hopefully you guys enjoyed me in today's episode. So if you guys like Gary, do show him some love. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, subscribe to our channel at zappy.com. Bye, man. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. Tune in. Vote Chi Kui. Vote Chi Kui for more Chi Kui. For more Chi Kui, not Chi Kui, but Chi Kui. Chi Kui. Chi Kui. Right, find the Chi Kui spot. Okay. Hello. Hello, who's on the line? Shopee here. Uh. There's no one at home. Uh. Sorry, who's Suki? Shopee delivery. Yeah. Oh, Shopee. Uh, yeah, just uh, leave it at the door. Just leave it at the door, side, uh. Yeah, just shoot right and uh, just take a photo. Yeah. Yeah. Because I scan later, Orinja van will pick up wrongly. Uh.